This is a reading in A Course in Miracles, chapter 31, <clears throat> section 6. Recognizing the Spirit. You see the flesh or recognize the Spirit. There is no compromise between the two. If one is real, the other must be false, for what is real denies its opposite. There is no choice in vision but this one. What you decide in this determines all you see and think is real and hold as true. On this one choice does all your world depend, for here have you established what you are as flesh or spirit in your own belief. If you choose flesh, you never will escape the body as your own reality, for you have chosen that you want it so. But choose the spirit, and all heaven bends to touch your eyes and bless your holy sight, that you may see the world of flesh no more except to heal and to comfort and to bless. Salvation is undoing. If you choose to see the body, you behold a world of separation, unrelated things, and happenings that make no sense at all. This one appears and disappears in death, that one is doomed to suffering and loss. And no one is exactly as what he was an instant previous, nor will he be the same as he is now an instant hence. Who could have trust where so much change is seen? For who is worthy if he be but dust? Salvation is undoing of all this. For constancy arises in the sight of those whose eyes salvation has released from looking at the cost of keeping guilt because they chose to let it go instead. Salvation does not ask that you behold the spirit and perceive the body not. It merely asks that this should be your choice. For you can see the body without help, but do not understand how to behold a world apart from it. <clears throat> it is your world salvation will undo and let you see another world your eyes could never find. Be not concerned how this could ever be. You do not understand how what you see arose to meet your sight. For if you did, it would be gone. The veil of ignorance is drawn across the evil and the good and must be passed that both may disappear so that perception finds no holding place. How is this done? It is not done at all. What could be there <clears throat> be within the universe that God created that must still be done? Only in arrogance could you conceive that you must make the way to heaven plain. The means are given you by which to see the world that will replace the one you made. Your will be done. In heaven, as on earth, this is forever true. It matters not where you believe you are, nor what you think the truth about yourself must really be. It makes no difference what you look upon, nor what you choose to feel or think or wish. For God himself has said, Your will be done, and it is done to you accordingly. You who believe that you can choose to see the Son of God as you would have him be, forget not that no concept of yourself will stand against the truth of what you are. Undoing truth would be impossible, but concepts are not difficult to change. One vision clearly seen that does not fit the picture as it was perceived before will change the world for eyes that learn to see, because the concept of the self has changed. Are you invulnerable? Then the world is harmless in your sight. Do you forgive? Then is the world forgiving, for you have forgiven it its trespasses, and so it looks on you with eyes that see as yours. Are you a body? So is all the world perceived as treacherous and out to kill. Are you a spirit, deathless and without the promise of corruption and the stain of sin upon you? 
So the world is seen as stable, fully worthy of your trust, a happy place to rest in for a while, where nothing need be feared, but only loved. Who is unwelcome to the kind in heart? And what could hurt the truly innocent? Your will be done, you holy child of God. It does not matter if you think you are in earth or heaven. What your Father wills of you can never change. The truth in you remains as radiant as a star, as pure as light, as innocent as love itself. And you are worthy that your will be done. That is the end of the reading in A Course in Miracles, chapter 31, section 6.